Praise the Lord, people of God. It's a blessing to be here this Monday, Monday, Thursday. God wants above all things for us to know who we are in Christ. Know who you are. God's greatest plan for us is to know our purpose, for us to know who we are in him. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. 25. He did not say, I am the death, resurrection, and the life. He knew his purpose was to die for our sins, but that in itself is incomplete. We are not what God allows us to go through temporarily. We go through a test and a trial, but we are not that test and trial. We go through a divorce, but we are not divorce. We go through broken relationships, but we are not broken relationships. Somebody is crying, saying, God, bad things keep happening in my relationships. It seems like I'm just a failure. The devil is a liar. Don't speak those words into the atmosphere. You are not a broken relationship. That's something you had to go through. We go through financial difficulty, but we are not financial difficulty. We go through moments of weakness, but we are not weak. Moments of poverty, but we are not poor. Joel 3.10 said, let the weak say I am strong. The songwriter said, let the poor say I am rich. You see, while Jesus is on the cross dying, the circumstance he's dying and is dead. But in the height of the suffering, he had to realize, I am not death. I am the resurrection and the life. Ah, uh, he had to realize that even before the height of the suffering. He had to speak it into the atmosphere. I am the resurrection and the life. We are not what our temporary circumstance says we are. We are who our eternal God says we are. So Jesus couldn't claim death as his title because that was what he had to go through. That was not who Jesus is. You see, our problem, mm, 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 our problem is we allow our circumstance to talk to us a lot more than we talk to our circumstance. The scripture says, let the weak say. See, to get your mind right about knowing who you are, you need to speak some things into the atmosphere. You have to say. So you see, I'm coming through this test. You have to say it. You have to say it. I'm coming through this test. I'm coming through this trial. I'm coming through this financial difficulty. I'm coming through this pain. I'm coming through this loss. I'm coming through this depression. I'm coming through this anger. I'm coming through this devastation. God did not create me to stay here. I'm coming through this. Say it. I'm coming through this. I don't have to lean on alcohol to get me through this. God will get me through this. I'm coming through this. When we talk to our circumstance, it helps us to speak into a right mindset. It aligns our thinking. James 3, 4 tells us that a small steering wheel directs this huge ship. So does our tongue direct our thinking and our acting. Now here's the question to ask. Check this out. How does the tongue direct our thinking? See, everyone knows you have to think before you can speak. Can't say anything without thinking it first. How then does speech direct thought? This is what I call the thermometer versus the thermostat. You see, the thermometer tells what the temperature is. The thermostat tells the room temperature what it's supposed to be and then changes the temperature. Help me, Holy Ghost. The circumstance wants to dictate our words, which direct us into more devastating circumstances. 
You see, the wrong words come from the wrong thoughts, which are designed to prolong our suffering. We don't want to suffer longer than what God intended. You see, but the right words, which come from divine thoughts, tell us we are only passing through this suffering. And this suffering is about to change into abundant glory. Romans 8.18 says, For the suffering of the present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory which will be revealed in us. That's right. God's got a glory plan that's greater than what we're going through right now. All we have to do is endure for the glory. The thermostat is turning on. Tell your neighbor the thermostat is turning on with my words. The things may be rough now, but Romans 8, 28 and 29 says, All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to God's purpose. You see, I may not see it or understand right now what I'm going through, but this thing I'm going through somehow is working for me. Somehow God's got a plan. It then says, for God foreknew. That's right, he's talking about us. He foreknew us. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. That's right, look to your neighbor and say, God knew about that. There is nothing we're going through right now that God didn't know about. Even our own mess ups. God knew about our silly actions before we could do it. Uh, even the things that we had to go through despite anything we could control. Yet, God knew about that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And we have to go through in order to conform. You see, it's important that we get into the mindset of Christ prior to the cross so that we can be conformed into his image. You see, the cross was difficult to face. And what we have to go through is also difficult to face. But if we are conformed into God's image, we have to get into a word set that transforms our mindset. Help me to teach Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost, to talk to your people. Yes, Paul prayed for more suffering for the sake of conforming. And get this, praying for more suffering just so that he could be favorable to God. Check this out. Philippians 3.10, Paul says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. God, I want to know you right there where you suffered. That's why I want to know you right there. I want to fellowship you with you right there where they talked about you like a dog, where they beat you, where you suffered, where you bled. I want to know you right there. Check this out. Being made conformable. The rest of the 10th verse says, being made conformable unto Christ's death. I want to know you there so that I can conform and be favorable to the Father as you were favorable to the Father, as you conformed to everything the Father wanted of you. I want to be like that. Being conformable. Check this out. Check this out. Conformable is not the same as comfortable. When conforming to God's plans, we sometimes have to lose friends, some boyfriends and girlfriends, some brothers and sisters, some church folks that used to like us, but don't like us no more because we're not so concerned about them. We're more concerned about God's business first not their business first. People don't like you when you start conforming. Conformable is not the same as comfortable. Thank you, Jesus. Suffering conforms us into God's image. It helps us to become sons and daughters. See, once our words have conformed our thoughts, we think on kingdom things above all things. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. 
when we think on things that God says are true, despite our circumstance, the thermostat is turning on. Yes, it is. The will of heaven comes to earth. The thermostat is set, and it's a matter of time before the temperature changes. In such cases, we can only act according to who we are. We are the king's kids, obedient even unto death. Job 13, 15 said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that's the righteous kid's only response to the challenges of life. No matter how bad it is, God, I'm going to trust you. I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me here. I know what I'm going through is not my destiny. I know what I'm going through is humbling me some more. It's conforming me to your image. I know that you are the potter. I am the clay. And when you're done with me, I'm going to shine like never before. You said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If you be put on that cross, if you suffer to maximum extent, you will shine like never before. You're going to claim the power of the kingdom of heaven and earth and under the earth. All things, all power. And if I suffer with you, I'll have all power with you. Check this out. Obedience and life, it goes together. Death is the result of disobedience. Jesus never says, I am the death, resurrection, and the life. Because there was no disobedience in him. There was no give up in him. There was no quit in him. There was nothing in him that God was not pleased with. There was nothing outside of God in him. So death was merely what he had to go through. It was not who he was. A disobedient Christ is no Christ at all. Such is death. Death is who the disobedient are. Christ went through death for a moment so that he could change our identity from death to life. We were a mess. We took on the identity of mess and mess up. We took on the identity of sinner. Uh, we took on the identity of, of hopelessness. Oh, but Christ came to change our identity. Christ came that we could be called resurrection that we could be called life. Christ came so that we could be called Christ's life. Yes, Christ came and we ought to give him praise right there. He swept us up when we was a mess. He swept us out of our sin when we didn't have the right mind. Oh, he kept us. We can praise him right there. Check this out. All those we knew who died because of the Christ life. Touch your name and say it's temporary. We're going to see them again. <laughs> Our lost loved ones. We're going to see them again. It's temporary their death. Because they've taken on the name through faith. They've taken on the name life and resurrection. Thanks be to God. God changed who we are and we will not die a permanent death. We are resurrection and life. There's no disobedience in God's body. Jesus knew who he was and he satisfied his father. Jesus wants nothing more than for us to do the same, to know who we are and to satisfy our father. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I want you to repeat after me. We're going to speak some things into the atmosphere. Repeat after me. I am the body of Christ. I am conforming into God's image daily. Christ lives in me. There is no disobedience in me. The disobedience that was in me, God dealt with it. 
we can praise him right there. Thank you for dealing with it. Thank you for carrying the cross. Thank you for taking my disobedience and calling me into obedience. Thank you. Let's, let's, let's move on. Continue repeating after me. I am the resurrection and the life. I will not die. My congregation will not die. My family will not die. My friends will not die. My hope in Jesus cannot die. My faith lives forever. My faith community lives forever. My joy is unspeakable. My fire is unquenchable. My love is everlasting, causing me to walk in forgiveness all the days of my life. My peace reaches out to those at war with me. My kindness is without limit. My long suffering is tempered with good words. Words of divine intention for my life. I am complete in Jesus. I may have uncomfortable decisions to make. But so long as they are conformable, I will be all right. I am in the Godhead. My congregation is in the Godhead. We are the head and not the tail. We are lords over this earth. God has given us all power. This is who I am. This is who we are. Come on and praise him right there. Praise him right there. Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. 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 Now that I know who I am, I'm crying different tears. Now that I know who I am, I'm crying tears of joy, tears of victory. I know who I am because I know who I am. I'm rising out of this pit. I'm rising out of this depression. I'm rising out of this despair. I know who I am. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. It used to be hopeless. Not anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Cry out to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 